barn fire breaking out earlier this afternoon in Ferrisburg, Vermont, prompting Vermont State Police to redirect traffic while crews worked to put out the blaze. The barn, located right next to a house, was on Sutterly Road, which was shut down for a portion of this afternoon. As you can see in this video, billowing smoke could be seen very clearly in the sky. The owner of the barn says no one was injured from the flames, but they lost six baby goats and a camper that were all inside the barn, and sighting on their house was also melted. We're working to find out if a cause of the fire has been determined. A Vermont man is behind bars tonight after police say he had an active arrest warrant for burglary and is a suspect in connection to a different burglary case. At around 4 this afternoon, Vermont State Police received a tip that 25-year-old Joshua Stone was at a Shell gas station in Bethel, Vermont, which is where state troopers ended up arresting him. Stone is being held at the Southern State Correctional Facility on a $7,500 bail. He'll be facing a judge tomorrow afternoon. Well, Matt, it was a relatively calm and quiet weekend, but oh, looks like we have a little bit of snow on the way and maybe a warm up too. Yeah, just a touch of snow before that warm up. It's actually on the leading edge of the warm air coming in, so the mountain towns could see a couple more inches. No weather concerns though tonight. Brattleboro looking a little empty there on Main Street. It is a cold night to be walking out. 21 degrees right now under clear skies and temperatures are really falling down, especially in the Adirondacks. It's down to 13 right now in Saranac Lake. Check out St. Jay though at 32. There's some lingering clouds that's keeping a blanket on things in uh, the Northeast Kingdom, keeping temperatures from falling as much as they would under clear skies. So Newport still sitting at 28. Now the clouds have been very stubborn in the Northeast kingdom. I'm not so optimistic that they'll totally clear out tonight, but everybody else will see mainly clear skies and we're expecting even some single digits out towards Saranac Lake by tomorrow morning. So it is a very cold start tomorrow, but I think more of us will start out with bright blue skies and then by mid morning the clouds start to take back over and yes, around and after sunset we're talking about more rain and snow showers. Not a big system whatsoever, but we'll time those out for you and show you when the sunshine returns. Amanda. Thanks, Matt. The North Country Honor Flight has sent hundreds of veterans out to explore the Capitol in Washington, D.C., and one event yesterday may have helped add a few more veterans to that list. That support came from the first annual 5K Family Run fundraiser, taking place at Post 1 in Keevesville, New York. The race offered a run for the athletes or a walk to take in the views of the mountains. It's the beginning of something small, looking to help a big tradition. Any fundraisers that you have, it, it gets the word out about uh, what uh, Honor Flight is and what they do, and uh, it, it really supports uh, our mission. It's nice to see them honored in a very specific way um, that takes them to D.C. and allows them to see those, once again, see those things, those monuments that were built for them and their peers. Post One and North Country Honor Flight are planning to bring back the race next year, sometime next October. Congress has until Friday to pass a spending plan and avert a government shutdown. House Republicans are working on a two-part plan, but it's not a long-term solution. Jen Sullivan breaks down the proposed plans and what it will take to avoid a shutdown. Time is running out for Congress to pass a funding bill and avoid a government shutdown. Nobody wants a government shutdown. Lawmakers have until midnight Friday before many government operations will be forced to halt. A plan must first pass the House and then the Senate, but newly elected House Speaker Mike Johnson hasn't even set a date for a possible vote on a spending deal in the House. I'm not exactly sure how he's going to play this, but he's not off to a great start. On Saturday, Speaker Johnson announced a plan on a GOP conference call. It's split into two parts. The first bill would extend funding until January 19th and would include money for military, veterans affairs, transportation, housing, and the energy department. The second part of the bill would extend funding until February 2nd and include money for the rest of the government. But it lacks deep spending cuts many right-wing House members pushed for. We got 1.7 trillion de deficit this year. And where, uh, under any circumstances, can they come to bring themselves to have an offset? Neither bill, though, includes additional aid for Israel or Ukraine, something many lawmakers want to see. I want to see that get done as expeditiously as possible. I also support aid to Ukraine. If the government shuts down, millions of federal employees won't get paid. 
the impact across the country could be significant. Not all services will be continued to be provided. So uh, all of those you know, could have a, a bad ripple effect. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. Two Republican presidential hopefuls were back in the Granite State yesterday. Former President Donald Trump spoke at Stevens High School in Claremont on Veterans Day. He thanked veterans for their service and went on to speak for nearly two hours. Vivek Ramaswamy also held events Saturday in Hillsborough and Merrimack. He spent his day speaking with voters. And for the Democrats, Marianne Williamson finished off her week in the Granite State in Keene. I think we need to be commemorating Veterans Day with more than just the standard pieties, but to actually get to a more honest and deep reflection on what it means to not only stand with our veterans, but to stand with our country. Ramaswamy also talked about how he would stand up for veterans and support our military in their recruitment. Coming up, new recalls on pet food. What pet foods to look out for to keep your furry friends healthy? You're watching NBC5 News. We'll be right back after the break. A heads up to pet owners, there's an important recall for pet foods. Mid-America Pet Food is expanding its recall from late October to include additional products due to possible salmonella contamination. The brands impacted include multiple bag sizes of Victor, Super Premium Dog and Cat Foods, Wayne Feeds Dog and Cat Food, Eagle Mountain Pet Food, and some members mark varieties with best buy dates before October 31st, 2024. The products were manufactured at the company's Mount Pleasant, Texas facility and shipped to retailers nationwide. According to the CDC, at least seven cases of salmonella, including one hospitalization, have been reported since November 1st. The CDC recommends discarding the pet food in a sealed trash bag and placing it in a sealed trash can so that wildlife can't get into it. Pets infected with salmonella may be lethargic and have diarrhea, fever, and vomiting. 
U.S. Fish and Wildlife announcing today the water use advisory for the Osable River in the towns of Peru and Osable has been lifted. The advisory began last week on November 7th. It was part of an effort to manage the invasive sea lamprey population in Lake Champlain by using high concentrations of lampreyside. More treatments are expected to come in the future. You can find updated water advisory statuses at the website listed on your screen. And coming up, the Lewiston community continuing to heal tonight. A concert of hope held in memory of the victims of the tragic shootings. You're watching NBC5 News. Today, steampunk enthusiasts from across New England coming to Vermont for the second annual Steampunk Expo in Essex Junction. NBC5 Sid Bulay has more on how everyone is invited into this niche community. Steampunk is back at the Champlain Valley Expo. The three-day event bringing together a niche community from across New England. It's based in Victorian era. Uh, so it's got that, that feel and that look and that kind of costuming and adds a kind of sci-fi fantasy element to that time period. So steam-powered robots and zeppelins and authors, makers, artists, costuming, a little bit of everything. With around 30 vendors sharing their crafts and giving presentations on steampunk related topics giving two panels, um, one called the Druid's Deadly Darlings on poisonous plants and another on femme fatales, which are historical lady poisoners. Renee Fleury says the natural world and the Victorian era have always been big parts of her life, making the steampunk community a perfect fit. It's the community that really draws me into it. There's a little bit of everything and I've met a lot of wonderful people, made a lot of wonderful friends as a result of being here. Others showing off their magic skills, crafts, costumes, and more. It's just very fun here. Creating an environment that's fun and welcoming for all ages. I thought it's really cool that I got in, I have a new friend. Yeah, I, yeah, I find it cool too. If 
you're looking to get into the world of steampunk, Jeff Fold says the best place to start is online. Uh, there's a lot of local individuals that, you know, post their costuming and their the things they've made online. That's probably the best place, obviously, if you're kind of interested in it in a general sense. Or keep an eye out for next year's expo. Upcoming events hosted by Vermont Gatherings can be found online. In Essex Junction, Sid Buley, NBC5 News. Now, NBC5 First Warning Weather, the area's certified most accurate forecast. Well, Matt, we are both off tomorrow. Yep. And guess what I will be spending my day doing? Oh, geez, what? Getting my snow tires on. Getting your snow tires on, good, <laughs> yes, before it actually like snows a lot here. That's probably yeah. a good idea. Yes, yes. Yeah, we won't be seeing a lot of snow for a while, though. I think we're, we're talking about a warm-up next week. I'm hey, excited for better 50s. Better safe than sorry. Right, of course. <laughs> yeah, always good to get them on early, beat that appointment queue for sure. Hey, we've been talking about the clouds, the very stubborn clouds, and we got an updated satellite picture here with the special filter on. And the clouds are still hanging tough in northern Vermont here. Even into the Champlain Valley, we've had some more backbuilding into some of those clouds. Right off of Lake Champlain right here, the pink uh, is denoting the clear skies. So honestly, at this point, I'm really not even sold that these clouds will clear by tomorrow morning in time to see some sunshine in the Northeast Kingdom. But there is a weak system off to the west. You could see a little swirl in the atmosphere up way near Hudson Bay, but it's dragging a warm front with it. And along that warm front, We've got some rain and snow showers, which comes in tomorrow. And I also think that it should start to erode some of those low cloud cover, at, at least for a brief window tomorrow morning. But then the rain and snow showers quickly come back by tomorrow evening. The best chance for any snow or rain in the daylight hours is going to be over northern New York. I think that it's around and after sunset that it makes it into Vermont. And it lingers throughout the day on Tuesday, although it is a little bit drier. Tuesday afternoon, but the clouds are hanging tough through Wednesday, but it's mainly dry the rest of the work week at least, turning milder with 50s by Thursday and Friday. So here's Futurecast still not having a very good handle on these low clouds up in the Northeast Kingdom. So it shows totally clear skies tomorrow morning. I'm not sold on that quite yet. I do think most of us will see a window of sun tomorrow morning, but it's possible places like Newport and St. Jay may still be socked in that cloud cover. Just can't shake them. And here's the snow showers tomorrow afternoon. Doesn't look like a lot on Futurecast. I do think that it'll be a little more widespread than what's depicted here. And you could see even a couple of heavier bursts of snow possible in the Champlain Valley by Tuesday morning. So I'm not concerned with travel impacts by any means, but just know you could see some uh, snow, snow showers falling there Tuesday morning and a couple of inches are possible in the high terrain by Tuesday afternoon. Now the clouds hang tough through Tuesday. So you won't see the sun Tuesday. You might see it though later Wednesday, especially in the afternoon, and that'll be the start of our warming trend. It's not just us, but really the entire United States, at least the eastern two thirds under the above average temperatures as we go into next week. So what that means is 50s are likely here and there's no significant snow chances, at least through next weekend potentially into the following work week. So here's your forecast for tomorrow. We'll have some snow in the air into the portions of the Adirondacks tomorrow, not causing any travel concerns once again, but just keep an eye out for it tomorrow afternoon. And again, for most of Vermont, it probably waits until around and after sunset to really get in here. So just some snow showers, some valley rain uh, raindrops there. Mostly cloudy for uh, southern Vermont after some morning sun and then some rain and snow showers for everybody on Tuesday morning. And then it's very slow and gradual clearing there on Wednesday as we stick around in the 40s. There's 50 by Thursday and mid 50s by Friday. Could even make a run at 60 in far southern Vermont. Amanda? I'm keeping my eyes on Thursday. In the wake of the tragic events that took place in Lewiston on October 25th, Prince of Peace Parish hosted a concert of hope. The concert featured several churches in the Lewiston-Auburn area, and those who attended today's concert took home a blanket of healing given to the church by an anonymous donor. Donations made from today's concert will go to the families affected by the tragedy. Well, Jack, it sounded like you were pretty excited while we were waiting for the show to go on. Well, you know, it's football. Who, who, Sunday who, night. Who, who <laughs> we wait all day for Sunday night here at NBC5. And uh, that particularly means that it's Monday morning right now. <laughs> We've got some European football to talk about happening here in the Green Mountain State. Middlebury men's soccer one win away from advancing to the round of 16 in the NCAA tournament. We've got the highlights coming up.
Now, the NBC5 Sports Desk.